I have a question between the teenage and the pre-pregnancy, which is uh, PCOS and PCOD. Yeah. Which is like a very common problem nowadays. Yeah. It's like... Uh, I, I'm, when we won't get too much into the gynecology aspect. This is just the diet aspect. Because any gynecologist that you speak to about PCOS or PCOD will usually say, first, let's approach it from a dietary perspective. I'm assuming that gynecologists send you a lot of patients for yes. the sake of a diet. So this PCOS, PCOD problem was very common when we were making fitness content nine years ago and it's still very common. No, it's more common. It's becoming it's more become, with time. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge rise in PCOS in India. Why? So again, lifestyle, sedentary, there's too much pressure on studies, especially from the age of 15, 16. They, uh, and uh, no proper guidance towards the physical health. And uh, of course, uh, hormones goes off, which is, so PCOS is not one hormone. It's a collection of many hormones or could be one or two out of the collection of many, which goes off. So starting from uh, thyroid to prolactin levels, to insulin levels, to um to uh, FSH, LH and DHEAS, many hormones goes off. And then we have to work in hand in hand with the doctors, key what medications are required and uh, uh, to get the periods regularized, etc. So it's a collection of all the symptoms. And in the diet part, what they require is, of course, um, if they have thyroid is off, so they need to take medication. Along with that, we have to make a thyroid friendly diet, which is... Um, making sure that we give them enough selenium in their diets, which can come from like macadamia or some nuts and uh, making sure we avoid certain uh, grains like bajra and avoiding uh, soya bean can help them to not, and any soya product for that matter. But w if they're taking... Why avoiding bajra? Because it raises your thyroid levels. Okay. So certain changes in the diet help them and of course certain exercises for thyroid patient and making sure their B12 is on the right track because B12 deficiency and iron deficiency can spike your TSH. Also D3 deficiency, making all the three levels proper so thyroid can be handled. Next is and certain asana especially like Sarvang asana which can you know uh, massages it, your yeah. gland that's what people don't understand about yoga until they start doing it yeah that you're, mo you're moving your body in so many weird ways yeah, yeah, yeah. that definitely those organs are getting yeah, massaged 100 percent. there's just you know the scientific research on these subjects related to specific asanas needs to be done yeah i always believe in this and we yeah. we have uh, we send them to even uh, yoga for yoga classes so that's about the and also you know any hormone issues happen because of they are not consuming enough good quality fat. So there is something called essential fatty acids, which is important for making, balancing these hormones, okay, which is thyroid and pancreatic, everything. So deficiency of, uh, and where does the essential fatty acids come from? It comes from fish. But if you're a vegetarian, then you have to use oil. Now, you know, there is another leher in India about ghee. Everyone is cooking food in ghee. I don't understand why. What will you get out of ghee? Of course, cholesterol. But how much cholesterol? What about essential fatty acid which you'll only get from an oil? Any so oil like... The, the rule with uh, fat consumption is change it up. Right? No, so ghee is to be how our forefathers have told that ghee, make it, make a dal in ghee. Put ghee in on your chapati and maybe add it a little bit to your rice. But the vegetable should be cooked in oil. Okay? Why are you not cooking your vegetables in oil? So deficiency of oil can also cause your hormones to go off. So that also we check for them. So, so that's about that. What oil do you recommend to your clients? So I tell them I'm I'm fine with peanut, I'm fine with sunflower, I'm fine with rice bran, I'm fine with any oil which is in Indian cooking because we do cooking at a high temperature. So any of these oils are fine. Okay. And how much do you need to cook like one sabji for four people? <laughs> <laughs> depending what else you are eating with that 3 to 4 teaspoons in a day is Got enough it. so with every meal 1 teaspoon of fat is more than enough more than enough is it okay to do like uh, in the morning maybe I have 1 teaspoon of ghee to cook my eggs or whatever then the afternoon 1 teaspoon of another oil then uh, my, my, my third meal will be just little nuts which I also count in this fat category and the fourth meal will be another oil 
that's so that's instead of doing so much of complication we tell everyone to cook their eggs in olive oil because eggs don't require high temperature cooking so you get your mufa mufa is also important for you because it raises your good cholesterol then i tell them to use if they want to like put little butter on their toast or little ghee on their chapatis it's perfectly all right this is how we are grown so but i tell them because if you are having milk protein in dahi and paneer from you are getting enough hidden fat which is again ghee fat so don't use ghee on making dal so use oil for making vegetables and dal like just use oil for that and then but you can use oil uh, and dinner the same way so you can use your uh, uh, peanut oil for 2 3 months then sunflower oil for 2 3 months then rice bran oil for 2 3 months i'm fine with that got it so over but the use, year yeah but mm. use uh, olive oil for eggs but keep rotating so if your bottle gets over then you buy a bottle of another oil yeah got it would be a good good choice to do okay i want to expand this conversation on pcos again um if someone comes up to you with pcos and they sent to you by a gynecologist saying that you have to actually correct your diet what are common mistakes you see in their diet before they come to you uh and is the treatment the same in most cases or is it different so what mistakes i see that uh like back in the day say 2005 6 those days the girls were extremely sedentary they would not exercise and that's why they were putting on weight and they were taking junk food so no balance of fat and too much of carbs and excess bad quality fat and sugars but nowadays it's not that the girls are going towards that kind of food and they're not active they're actually really doing a lot of exercise also at the same time even teenagers yeah yeah everyone is quite pumped about exercise they have a wow yeah i would say a good 50 to 60% are quite aware and they are managing the exercise but the problem is that they don't have the balance of exercise also so what we do for pcos the first and foremost most important thing is weight loss okay so 80 to 90 today only we had a uh, girl coming in who had pcos and she knows that when she is her ideal body weight which is around 50 to 53 all her pcos symptoms goes away which is uh, hirsutism which is hair and the pigmentation and um uh, pe- irregular periods and blah blah so all that corrects as soon as you reach your ideal body weight so my job is to make sure we bring them to their good weight and at the same time give us give a sound diet and at the same time give them a good exercise pattern so because they are so pumped and they know about weight training and pilates and yoga and kickboxing so they are only doing muscle building and stretching kind of exercise they are not concentrating on uh, low impact cardio so we have to balance that that's the common mistake they are making and um of course many of them turn vegan so we tell them no we need good quality fat also at the same time which comes from oil and nuts but at the same time some amount very little amount of cholesterol so we balance their diet so the common mistake they would be making is that they are still very very fond of chocolates so bringing their desserts and and you know after swiggy and zomato like okay i want to have this ice cream immediately order mm. it can come at 1 o'clock any time right so that is a challenge they and all sleep late sleep is a major issues in the teenagers i am seeing nowadays which is actually causing all that hormone related issues because i don't understand that they think if they sleep at 11 they are doing a crime haven't you heard this <laughs> i don't want to say anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah so kids their development is happening they need their rem sleep they need their deep sleep how will the deep sleep happen if they are going to sleep only at 2 3 oh. so if the deep sleep is not happened that means their body is not rested how if the body is not rested how the good hormones are going to be produced how will the body repair itself you tell me so that is one another common mistake i'm finding the sleep deprivation because they are awake till so late they also munch rubbish at night 
so these are the common problems i'm seeing so but we have to really tell them that uh, you need to get more responsible towards your life you're like you know you're no more like uh, you need to be sleeping because you are a student you need to study you need to grow you need to have a stronger body it's not always all about academics so all these are also you're responsible for your own body also yeah then they it's a whole 360 degree approach towards one's health so if someone comes up to you with pcos in most cases it's a weight loss related issue yeah so if they lose weight the pcos tends to correct itself usually yeah usually okay this is what i've heard a lot of gynecologists say also uh but say if there is a case where the pcos doesn't correct itself after weight loss Then, then they have to continue the medication which is could be a uh, hormone related medication do you have to add anything to your diet or it's more about removing things and just so, cleaning it up no so we do give vitamins which is uh myo inositol and d chiro inositol and uh, for prolactin we also give l carnitine and we give b long it's another vitamin so b deficiency so we uh, add certain vitamins and suppose they are not sleeping on time and uh, anxiety is another issue which i find among the teenagers now because of the studies and the peer pressure and the body image so uh, so we also tell them that take counseling if you want to and we add magnesium so that they fall off to sleep they have a good long deep sleep all and the, all these are supplements the supplements okay. we can't prescribe medication so yeah we handle with certain vitamins and of course i told you b12 d3 iron has to be in the good range okay um basically try not eating dessert also that's a key part of all this everything we spoke about weight loss yeah so dessert is something which you can't tell them listen don't have dessert they're not going to listen to me or you or their parents so we tell them how to have desserts like today only two girls they said they have to have something cold at night otherwise they can't sleep cold something cold like an ice cream okay like a cold dessert cold yeah, and sweet yeah, cold and sweet so i gave them a very good hack huh. 100 ml of almond milk one like one fourth cup of frozen blueberries and maybe half a banana and maybe one to two dates depending on your sweetness and around six to eight pistachios which okay. is unsalted okay. and i i because i work out so i add little bit of a protein powder in it okay. so there is natural sugar and good quality fat and good quality proteins and some berries so that you sleep well and you put an ice and then you churn it and becomes like a nice smoothie <laughs> which is my half the time i have that at night if you enjoyed this clip from the ranveer show we've uploaded a ton of other clips related to a ton of other topics so explore the channel because there's something for every